The playlist in FL Studio. This is perhaps the most important part of FL Studio. This is where you actually go and put your song together. This is where you arrange it. Uh, this is this is your playlist here. It's just kind of set a set of gridded lines here with the tracks and the bars up top. Uh, there's three different elements that can go into a playlist. There's your patterns, your automation clips, and your audio recordings. And before we actually get into all the functionality of the playlist, let's just talk about how you get these three elements into your playlist. First is the pattern. The pattern comes from your channel rack or your step sequencer. So in this case, this is pattern one. It's just some snare hits that I have here. And I make this pattern and the step sequencer, and it shows up up here. Let me close the step sequencer. And I go to my drop down. I say, I want to I want to put pattern one into my playlist. And I'm on the pencil tool here, and I'll just click. And there's pattern one. Next are our automation clips, right? These are the things where we can adjust things like panning and volume over the over time as the, as the, as the uh, pattern progresses this also uh, and as with everything in FL Studio there's multiple ways to do things but uh, my preferred method is to go back to the step signature left click on the thing you want to automate so in this case the snare drum and out of these three windows up here uh, all these different knobs not all of them but a lot of them you can automate and to automate and to see if you can automate a knob uh, you just right click on it and see if there's a choice for automation. So in this case, it says create automation clip, which I already did. Uh, this is a volume automation clip for that pattern right here, this, this snare drum and the step sequencer. And then finally, it's just audio recording. So in this case, this is just uh, a quick little audio recording I made. It's actually of, <laughs> it's actually an audio recording from the pattern um, that I just recorded through this uh, little USB microphone in my computer. And that I just did in Edison, and you can do that, you know, uh, through the mixer here. Uh, and here it is here, just Edison. So those are the three elements that you can get inside the playlist. It's patterns, your automation, and uh, your actual recordings. Now to, to see this, we have our, our picker over here. And uh, pick, pick a pattern or an automation clip or uh, an audio recording, we can, we can go between our patterns Here's our audio recordings and our automation clips. So between these three up here, all the elements of your entire song will be in these three areas here. So that's a really broad overview of how the playlist is arranged and the elements you can have in it. Let's actually get into the details of what you can actually do in the playlist. And let's start at the options menu. As I've said in my other videos, you can pretty much do everything from the options menu. Most of the stuff that's in the options menu is also going to be all these things over here. Well, let's kind of go through them. And first, so that we can see what we can do in the edit tool, let me, I'm going to hit control on my keyboard and left click on the mouse and I'm just going to drag and highlight that there. Let's go to edit and I can do all these things and their shortcuts are corresponding to the right over here such as cut, copy, duplicate, delete, shift left, shift right. Let's just try this real quick. Let's try shift right which is shift right on the keyboard. So I'm just going to go shift right arrow and you can see we're moving the pattern and I'm going shift to left bringing it back. You might be asking yourself why is it jumping by these gridded lines here? I'm going to get into that in a few minutes when we talk about the snap tool. There's a quantize here which we've talked about if for those of you that saw uh, my video on the piano roll quantizing is just essentially um, doing what we're just doing now which is everything is set to a specific, very specific time and there's no real in between. It's, it's going to be locked into the beat. We have a few different view options here. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the, with the uh, factory settings or the default settings that FL Studio gives. So I don't really mess around with this too much. You can kind of change the grid color. Um, you know, you can do things like change the color of the clips. So like right now they're kind of gray looking. You can go to make them kind of glass looking. So there's a few different view things in there that you can mess around with uh, if if you if you want the the uh, the playlist to actually look different. All right, let's talk about the snap function. Now the snap function is also this sort of green horseshoe here, which I have engaged right now. Um, this here dictates where your patterns and automation clips and in the audio where it actually falls when you bring it into the playlist. And while we're talking about this, we might as well talk about the pencil tool and the paint tool because that is how you actually insert 
clips into the playlist. When we do the pencil tool and we left click, as I, as I left click and hold it, I, I, it, not until I let, let go of the left click on the mouse does it actually put it down. Whereas with the paint tool, if I left click and I go along, it paints multiple and it keeps going. So just think of the paint tool as putting multiple down and the pencil tool is more precise. It's just for one clip and you're really being specific over where it's going. So this here, uh, we have, we kind of have the whole uh, very large quantities of time and very short quantities of time and then we have none. So right now I have it set to beat. So that means right here, this is a bar music from bar three to bar four and there's four beats in there. And so when I have it set on beat, I can only put a pattern on one of the beats. So even if I try to zoom in here and I try to put it halfway in between, it's only going to go to one of the gridded lines. But if I have the horseshoe set to none, then I can put it just about anywhere. So most of the time it's good to have this set to something like maybe it beats too broad, but you want it set to something so that everything's sort of locking into place. So that's the snap. The select is pretty self-explanatory. When I ha and we can also do select from this icon here. I don't really use select too often because you can really select with the pencil tool as well just by holding control and left clicking. I can select all these. Uh, but there are a few things you can do in addition to what you, what you can't do with the pencil tool when you have select tool on. So for example, I can do select all these and I can shift left click one of them and now I've unhighlighted that one whereas you can't do that with the pencil tool. You can do grouping of clips and grouping of tracks, um, and you can do that also by um, really, really anything that's grouped in FL Studio is done by. It means that whatever you do to anything in that group, it's going to do it to everything else. So if you delete one part of a group, it's going to delete the entire group. So everything kind of moves together. It's like a school of fish, um, and you can do that in the tracks as well. So you can actually and where is that? So you can group with the above track. So for example you could click on, let's go to further down the playlist where we're not working with it. So we can go to, we can group track 4 and track 5. So I can go track 5, group with above track, and now track 4 and track 5 are grouped. So whatever I do to track 4 is going to happen to track 5 as well. And while we're here I should just say there's a lot of functionality that you can do while um, right clicking on a track. But you can't always right click on a track and get this menu. For example, if you were on that select tool that we were on before, right clicking on the track doesn't do anything. You have to be either on the pencil tool or the paint tool to right click on a track and get this menu to pop up. Um, so there's a lot of things like renaming and changing icons that you can do here. Um, there's, you'll see this here, performance settings. You'll also see it over here on the on the options menu, performance mode. I'm not going to get into this that on this video. That's basically almost like a live version of FL Studio where you can set up your MIDI keyboard or something else uh, and you can put all these different patterns and automation clips and you can trigger them from your keyboard and basically can do a live performance of all your different clips in the playlist. Um, so it's kind of more for a live DJing sort of scenario but um, just, just so you're aware if you come across different performance options in the playlist that's what that's referring to. Um, but what else do we have when we right click on the track? Um, we can merge pattern clips, that's pretty useful. So if for example, um, let's just go back to the step sequencer real quick and let's see. Let's, oh actually, you know what, let's go here, let's go pattern, new pattern, I'm just going to say pat, yeah, let's just call it pattern two. And I'm just going to do snare hits but a little less frequently. And now I'm in pattern. Let's just make sure we're actually hitting pattern two. All right, so now we have pattern one and pattern two next to each other. So we can highlight these, right click, and go merge pattern clips. Now we have one merge clip, and that'll show up in our pattern selector up here. So we'll have pattern one, pattern two, and we'll have the merge clips. Um, so there you go. Those are some of the things you can do when you right click. Um, on on a track. And remember you can only do that in the pencil or the paint tool. 
Zoom, I don't really use the menu too often. I usually just use these page ups and page downs. So page up, page down. And you can also do a vertical zoom with this over here. So that's cool. Time markers are useful for staying organized and uh, you can know uh, there's a, there's a couple different options here. It's really good for looping if you want to keep hearing the same thing over and over again if you're editing something. Um, so for example, let's put let's put another clip down here towards the end. Um, let's just look at the two ones uh, that are probably most commonly used. There's um, this place loop one, and now I'm going to move this here. Basically, that means this is good if you're working towards the end of the song and you want to loop back, not to the beginning, but say you want to loop back to bar six. So as we, our track finishes here, it loops back to bar six. I'm going to delete that for now. There is also, we can add one, let's add a time, just a regular time marker, I'm just going to call it A. And let's just kind of maybe put that there. And time marker, let's add another one. I'm going to call that B. And let's put this here. And we can double click, double left click on A. And now it'll loop between those two points. The picker panel we already talked about, there's some different options for where you view the picker panel. But the picker panel is just this here. We have our patterns, audio, and automation clips. And performance mode I already talked to you about. Detached just means we see uh, the playlist by itself without the rest of FL Studio. Uh, so if you just kind of need a larger screen to work with. The pencil and the paint tool I already talked about. Delete button, basically when you have the delete down, when you have the delete button on, anything you do or scroll over or click on is just going to get deleted. We have the mute button. The mute button doesn't delete things, but as you scroll, as you left click and go over these patterns and then come back over them, um, they delete, or sorry, they mute or they unmute. Notice how as we go through these up here, we can only have one of these selected at a time. So you can't have the pencil tool and say the mute tool going simultaneously. This here is the slip tool. I don't use this too often, but basically you can hold left click on your mouse and it keeps the pattern or the clip in place, but it shifts the notes within it, within the pattern itself. So it doesn't actually move the clip, but it kind of rearranges the sequence inside the actual clip itself, as you can see I'm doing right now. Here's a slice tool. We can just kind of go through and slice, slice this audio part, uh, apart. You can do shift slice, which I'm doing now, and notice I can only spl uh, slice things vertically. I can also do a alt, and I can have a, have a pivot point. So that's cool. We already talked about uh, the select tool and the zoom tool. Playback, um, you know, I don't use this too often, but you can just kind of left click and hold, and you can kind of just sample what you're listening to. You can kind of just listen to it on its own. It's almost like a solo button. And then here we just have a play pause button um, that is just unique for the playlist itself. It's separate from the universal global play and stop for all of FL Studio up here. Um, so that's really F that's really the playlist in a nutshell. You know we have this uh, we have this top scroll bar up here and one over to the right over here to go up and down. Um, but that's really the uh, all the functionality um, that you really need to know inside the playlist. There's definitely some more specific pieces of knowledge, but I would say that's the bulk of it. So hopefully that'll get you up and running and get you using the playlists and FL Studio in general. Thanks for watching.